the desire to access the wealth and the abundance of the kingdom has nothing to do with money. It is a time redemption strategy. Please write it down. The battle for wealth is the battle for time and your soul. Two commodities. Write it down. Until you understand the mystery of time and the soul of a man, you have no business discussing finances. Because the real commodity in the realm of the spirit and in destiny is not real estate. It's not oil and gas. No, it's not your manufacturing, your products and your services. It is your time and your soul. This is what Satan is after. Satan is not after your money. He's not after your job. He's not after your increase. He's after your time and your soul. Because that's truly what is priceless as taught by scripture. So please look up. The Bible starts by telling us in Ephesians chapter 5. I will just run through because um, I just want to, let's just do some housekeeping before we begin to teach. Ephesians chapter 5, Paul is mentoring the church in Ephesus. And then he's telling us to redeem time, pastor. He said to walk circumspectly. The word circumspect means accuracy. That means that you will not always have the time to guess, make mistakes and come back and correct yourself. He's saying your lifetime cannot afford you that template of living. You do not have the luxury to waste 10 years, then come back and find out I was living a lie and start again. So he's, he's talking about accuracy of time. Are we together now? Walk circumspectly. And he says that your wisdom here is demonstrated by routing a system that has dominion over time. That whoever conquers time is wise. Remember, we're discussing finances. Time. The unit of destiny is time. Destiny is a function of time. Let me tell you this. Look up, please. No matter what leaves you, if time is still there, you are not at a loss. Lose money and gain time. You did not lose. Make mistakes and have time. You will still come back. But have everything and lose time. You are finished. So says the desire of a dying man. A dying man will not ask you for more land. A dying man will not ask you for more promotion, more degrees. A dying man will plead for more time. Isaiah 38. That was the cry of Hezekiah. Remember, oh God, do I not deserve time? And God blessed him by extending time. So the real loss in a man's life is not properties. It's not money. It's time. And Satan is aware of this. Please understand. The battle for wealth is the battle for time redemption. He's telling us that we do not have all times for all things. So you must redeem time. I've said it again and again and I will continue to say it. It takes time to know God. You don't know God in a nutshell. It does not work in the pursuit of God. It takes time to know God. You don't summarize knowing God by looking at one or two verses. No. There are times that you will stay to know God and he will patiently come. As though you don't have anything to do. They that wait... On the Lord. Not they that wants to see him. Those who are ready to invest time. Are you getting what we are saying now? So we are dealing with time here. That whoever can, can have dominion over time. According to scripture. Is a wise man. And he says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise. Redeeming the time. Because. Because. The days are evil. So God interjected systems of advantage in our work so that by these mysteries of the kingdom, we will be able to exert dominion over time. Did you know that in Africa, most families did not have the opportunity to know God early? Is that true? Now, if you get born again at age 30, I hope you know based on the schedule of destiny, you are very late. Because that's when Jesus was 
fulfilling his assignment. And you get born again by 30, which looks very early in Africa. Yet you are in trouble because it will take time for you to argue about the ministry of the Holy Spirit until you finally receive him. It will take time to argue about all of these things until you are finally filled with the Holy Ghost. Then submit yourself to the mentorship of a correct pastor. If you find a wrong pastor, be ready to reverse. After 10 or 15 years. Remember, it's not every shepherd that is after his heart. Are we together? So I get born again at age 30. Take 10 years to establish myself in the knowledge of God. Even if I have 120 years to live, time is already against me. There has to be something introduced into my space that can help me gain time. This is why he interjected mysteries like mercy, like favor. I will restore the years. Now listen, everybody's destiny by default is disadvantaged. You rewrite your destiny by taking advantage of these systems that have been put in the economy of God. Add it to your destiny and then you start changing things. So that God can make your, your predicament of 20 years be remedied within one year. You have gained time. Are we together? If you finish school in 2000 and you just got a job now, it's almost not a blessing. Are we together? Now, humanly speaking, I'm not being sarcastic because you know that the number of people who have been queuing up waiting for that money alone will not make it a blessing. Even if it's one million per month you are receiving. You will need a system. You will spend your remaining lifetime settling those who have been waiting impatiently for you. This is Africa we are talking about. There is, a, there, is, there is a science to our hardship. There is an explanation to it. So it is important for us to understand. We are not just dealing with money because this, is, this has been the approach to the subject of wealth and prosperity. It comes from a standpoint of lust. Most people approach the subject of wealth it's just about money and having materials uh, and then proving to people in the village and around that I'm... No, that's too small a reason to get God's attention. What about his program here? Are we together? Yeah. You see, when believers are mentored and built, it is not just truth that blesses, but truth that is sequentially arranged. Truth can kill. When, if I get born again and the first message I hear is prosperity, chances are that I will be a fool and the prosperity of fools destroy them. Are we together now? I'm, I just get born again and my first sermon is prosperity. I have not died to the flesh. And so, I will, I will view the subject of wealth from the lens of my corrupt heart and it will destroy me. So, there are other truths that must precede that to make the subject of prosperity a blessing. So, let me just clarify straight up. We are not just randomly talking about an obsession for more just because we hate poverty. No. There is a better kingdom drive to the things that we are teaching. When you understand the kingdom and you understand what I am teaching, um, I, I'm sorry to be a bit harsh, but it becomes wicked to remain poor. When you understand this, being poor becomes your final proof that you are not interested in God's program. This is more than just having enough. So time circumspectly as wise not as unwise redeeming what time listen it takes time to raise children and you cannot really raise children by proxy i hope you know that when your child begins to call you uncle because you wake up early in the morning you sleep late at night and only to eat the bread of sorrow they are now left under the mentorship of someone that may not sustain the kingdom values you want them to have. 
multiply this kind of tragedy for 15 years your child has become something you almost cannot correct are we together it takes time to build a healthy relationship with your husband and your wife if the only time you meet is during weekends or when you are settling quarrels that marriage is already broken you need time to pray many people cannot pray because the awareness you hear people say no time no time and that's exactly what the devil likes listen satan knows that once you have time you are dangerous satan fears anyone who has time because he knows what god can do with your time so he finds a way to do something to your time so satan conducted a research himself and found out what do men do with their time on earth and he found out that the greatest investment of our time is to get money that's why money became a subject of interest it was never about money he conducted a research and found out that most believers will give their time in exchange for money Are we together? Time. And there's nothing wrong with that in itself. Except for the fact that he knows that if he manipulates the economy, he will make you give more time. And because you have only 24 hours per day, the remaining time you can have to spend with God, he will do something so that you can take out of it to still try to get more money. So the Bible says it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow. Are we blessed already?